Nothing quite captures the festive spirit of the Christmas season like the bleak wastelands of Nagaroth, aka Canada. In this matchup, in the land of beavers and maple syrup, we have a battle between myself, the Bretonians, my buddy uh, Owen rocking the Vampire Coast, my other friend MR Defender playing with Chaos and Justice with the Dark Elves. A quick comment on the map before I get into the replay. This map is not what I would consider to be a balanced map in the sense that this whole area is really in um, a pit and the attacking army is basically fighting downhill. And just to, to really emphasize this point, like this is the line of sight that these deck gunners have. Uh, so you can see on the initial approach, like a lot of them don't have a line of sight to be firing, which I think puts a big advantage to the attacking team. Likewise, with these uh, gunnery mob, there is no line of sight where they're deployed right now for basically anything that is in range. The only thing that they can see is way, way out of range on the far side. So something to keep in mind whenever you are deploying on these types of maps is making sure that you're able to have line of sight. Uh, the second thing about the deployment, the zo zombie pi oh my gosh, zombie pirate deckhands mob are deployed very close to the deck gunners, which kind of makes sense because zombie pirate deckhand mob are slow. These are uh, the deck gunners are also slow. You don't want to go out too far because you're not going to be able to use that meat shield to protect the um, shooting units from getting attacked by other things. But I do think. It makes sense to push up just a little bit so that you give your artillery and other units some time to shoot. Once they're, you know, really this close and engaged, it's going to be very hard for these units in the back to shoot, especially if the opposing team doesn't bring very much large. And you'll notice like a meta is developed for fighting against the vampire counts, and it's usually to go um, just with low-cost infantry because you don't want your expensive large units getting shot up by all of the armor pen missiles that the Vampire Coast have access to. On on uh, a comment on my deployment, I think it was not optimal because what I should have recognized is we were going against some very smart players and they're not going to, you know, let their advantage of the train go to waste. So just as deployed over in the woods, and what I should have done is I should have deployed a def defensive front expecting that his troops are going to attack me from the woods, right? Uh, instead, I had a lot of units that were deployed on this back left flank, and they weren't in a position to really deal with that threat coming out of the woods. So what you'll see as I hit play, there's going to be a lot of missile and melee pressure coming at me on the right side. And by the time it takes, by the time I, I wheel over here, like there's already so much damage that's been done to this pocket that it's sort of too little too late. Another comment here is I brought some battle pilgrims. These are the regiment of renown, uh, holy wardens. They were probably not an optimal choice against chaos, which has access to very high armor and dark elves which also tends to be pretty high armor there were only a few units where they would really have a lot of value initial engagements going off here uh, the knights of the realm are coming in to fight with these bleak swords we've got some archer fire being traded between the dark riders with repeater crossbows and these peasant uh, peasant bowmen I, did, I went with the peasant bowmen with poison because uh, I think any sort of debuff you can get is very helpful and I didn't need the fire damage against these uh, armies because they don't tend to have physical resist. A nice charge comes in here, look at this, um, the Dark Riders coming in on the flank. I notice it and I respond with my Spearman of Arms but with a little bit of uh, zigzagging Justice was get able to get in and lay a hurt on the um, Peasant Bowman which was great but as soon as he laid that charge in I think Justice should have pulled out because I had in reserve a unit of Knights of the Realm and they were able to come in and uh, attack these units right away and Dark Riders are 500 gold each right so if these two units wipe that's a thousand gold the archers are only 450 so that 
turns out to be a cost-effective trade for me if I'm able to catch these dark riders. Um, that said, there is a, a unit of Knights of the Realm that had been sent in here earlier, and it was getting shot up by these shades, so very nicely played by Justice. And these Dark Riders with repeater crossbows are absolutely eliminating these rotting Prometheans who are sent in to protect the zombie pirate gunnery mobs. So I think, you know, in hindsight, the rotting Prometheans should have just let that zombie pirate gunnery mob uh, die and retreated uh, to help out the rest of the, the team, or maybe try to shore up this flank. This um, unit, this Necroflex Colossus, it has a very low arc of fire, which is surprising considering how big it is, but up until recently, it hasn't been able to shoot any units. Only now, just as the Forsaken have crested the hill, has it been able to shoot, but up until this point, it was just firing all of its ammunition into the hill, which was a really unfortunate um, loss for in terms of damage potential. That said, the balance bar is slightly in our favor, but you know, clearly we we had the advantage early on with the initial shots because we we're the artillery heavy faction, and now that it's turning into a melee grind, we don't have as much resources as the opposing uh, opposing armies do to sort of deal with that. The um, Blessed Field Trebuchet has been trying to do some work on the Black Guard of Negron, but it's it's sort of a damage over time thing. You're not going to burst uh, burst that down. Sil Silostra Direfin pops her Damn Knights Errant. You'll see that they come into the Forsaken and the Chaos Warriors over here. The Witch Elves push, push up, and they start trying to pin the Necrofex Colossus. Recognizing this, I send the Holy Wardens of... Uh, Maison Tal against the Witch Elves because it's one of the few good matchups that they have and they're able to wipe them pretty quickly. Meanwhile the Black Guard of Nagrand have have been able to attack the Knights of the Realm. Knights of the Realm are in big trouble. They're rampaging right now because of the proximity of the Witch Elves so I'm unable to pull them away from the Black Guard. That's a huge win for uh, Justice. Also, Justice has crept the Harpies around the flank outside of the line of fire of my other troops, and he's found his way onto the Blessed Field Trebuchet and the Peasants with uh, Pox Arrows. I do have Knights of the Realm nearby, and sooner or later they're going to make their way over there to help out, but their specialty is anti-large. These units are all small, uh, so I'm not getting that bonus versus large even if I do charge into them. Likewise, the Bleak Swords are also small, so I don't get a bonus. So right around this time, the uh, Necrofex Colossus is taken out of commission. There's one, two units of Dark Riders with repeater crossbows, and then also one, two units of Shades, all of which were firing in at the Necrofex Colossus. And with the armor penetration from those missiles, um, it immediately uh, just starts to fall apart, crumble, and fall. So. Uh, big loss for our team. Nice job, Justice, recognizing that and taking it out of the fight. Um, but, yeah, things are looking pretty dicey. The balance bar is still pretty even, but we're losing a lot of our, our ranged units, and we don't have uh, a lot of units here with mobility to really contribute. So I have way too many units inactive here. This is definitely my fault. We played this game pretty late at night, and I was a little bit tired, and I was also very much like focused on microwing the green knight into Malkith. So you look, the this, is this is one of the advantages that the green knight has versus Malkith is speed. Uh, Malkith on the cold one knight is pretty cool because he's a small target, but he still has some mobility. That's a compromise. So the great thing about the um, Fae Enchantress is she has access to favor of the Fae. So one strategy you can do you can use the mobility of the Green Knight with 84 speed versus the slower speed of Malkith, only 68, and really try and punish him by uh, making contact. The Green Knight is fast, it'll tag Malkith, and if you pop Favor of the Fey, that's plus 44 melee attack. In addition to, if you take the Dolores Blade, you've got plus uh, 26 melee attack with extra 40% armor pen and 40% weapon damage. That is a nightmare for Malkith to deal with. Um, very hard for him to get away. Uh, the unit is, um, if it's able to make contact, is going to do a ton of damage. 
um, especially if Malkith doesn't have Soul Stealer. So Justice, he sort of screens it a little bit with the Dark Riders with crossbows. I would have uh, sent the mid to melee and just tried to pin the Green Knight. Maybe it was an accidental contact. I'm not really sure there. The Dread Spears are coming over to help the Green Knight. So you'll notice I reposition in, in a minute there. Uh, I, I just want to make one comment quickly. Like if you're watching a replay file and you notice that it doesn't end the way you remembered it, make sure you take your mods off because I actually had that uh, problem where I had a I had watched this replay and I was like, what the hell? I remember the Green Knight and it, it caught up to Malkith and it did a ton of damage and uh, eventually killed Malkith. And then uh, when I watched the replay, that didn't happen. I was like, what, well, what's going on here? So it's because I had some mods on. So you'll see in this replay, the Green Knight does eventually catch uh, its target and take it offline. But the back line here is entirely compromised. Feral Manticore has made its way onto Queen Best and it's just going to wreck face. We have no answer to Archaeon the Ever Chosen and his two Exalted Heroes. Usually I don't like Exalted Heroes because they have low leadership and it's pretty easy to just take them off the map, but in this case, versus Vampire Coast, they were a really good choice. So here goes, the final charge from the Green Knight. <laughs> Trying to take Malkith offline. Malkith sort of cheated by not taking Soul Stealer, by not taking Word of Pain. So th he really doesn't have any way to, other than running through blobs of infantry, to get the Green Knight off of his back. So fortunate uh, situation for me. I still think... If you take two Paladins, you're going to be better off than if you take one Green Knight. But I wanted to try something different and a little bit fun here, so that's uh, that's what I did. Balance Bar is starting to shift now pretty heavily in our opponent's favor. Green Knight does, with the favor of the Fae, wipe out Malkith. Um, the Queen Bess is crumbling at this point from uh, the pressure of the Pharaoh Manticore. Fae Enchantress has been trying to tap everything she can with uh, just for her Mortis Engine effect with Favor of the Fae. Um, sorry, no, it's not, It's called Mist of the Lady, but things are, are looking pretty sketchy now. Peasant Bowmen are able to get these Dark Riders with Repeater Crossbow to fall back, but the Shades are still very healthy and they can mulch up these Spearmen. Uh, I think Justice doesn't... Is he still? Yeah, he does take this melee engagement. Um, the Shades have no problems mulching up Spearmen. If you look at their uh, attack abilities, 42 melee attack with a weapon strength of 30. If you see Spearmen, don't be afraid to charge them in with your Shades and just erase them off the map. You don't have to be too cute and try and snipe them and all of this. Shades are a very good offensive unit. Actually, they have better stats than Bleak Swords. You look at the Bleak Swords, They've got armor of 30, melee attack of 35, shades, sorry, um, melee attack of 35, weapon strength of 28, shades, they've got a melee attack of 42, weapon strength of 30. So they actually, they hit harder than bleak swords in combat and they can just wipe the spearmen really quick. So there's not too much analysis left to share on this game, but I, I think it was a really fun game, well played to my opponents who uh justice and mr they they picked a very good choice of build in this game and i think that they made absolutely the most of the map that they were given so uh smart decision to push through the forest and then the chaos warriors with their 100 armor with their shields they were really able to absorb that impact of the vampire coast uh shooting and then the harpies were a menace for the back line and for myself I didn't deploy defensively over here like I should have. And the units in the back left, they were inactive uh, and not really helping out in the fight. So fun game. I'm just going to wind it uh, wind it up here. and we'll So Knights of the Realm, I mean, they, they put in some work. Um, the Fae Enchantress, she's probably the most competitive Bretonian pick, and she was not too bad. The Green Knight is very expensive. Usually I don't bring him because of that. Uh, but he did sort of get his man. My plan was to assassinate Malkith with him. And, you know, I did spend a lot of time sort of microing him in and around other things in order to get Malkith. And you noticed in the replay that I had a lot of inactive units because of it. But it did get the job done. So it is an option. Like I said earlier, I still think two paladins is going to be more effective at doing that. And the other thing is the Green Knight has access to 
a, an ability that will give him heals if he's in the forest. On this particular map, the Green Knight was not deployed over by the forest, uh, and so he didn't get access to those heals. I had needed to keep him near the Fae Enchantress to protect the Fae Enchantress and also to keep the artillery up. But because of that, it was sort of a, a big waste of points and uh, a lost opportunity for me with such a cool unit. For Owen, Solastra Diaphragm, very colorful, very fun. Uh, she, you know, she got the nice summon of the knights in, but unfortunately the knights weren't really able to find any soft targets. Um, the Zombie Pirate Deccan's Bomb, they're pretty stable, you know, meat troop. You know what you're going to get out of them. I would have pushed them up a little bit. And I I think, again, it was sort of an unfortunate map for Owen, but the Necrofex Colossus didn't have a line of sight for the early part of the battle. So he only got 38 kills, um, and then he did eventually get shot down by the Shades and by the Dark Riders with Repeater Crossbow. So I think he, he needed to retreat a little bit earlier. The Rotting Prometheans, one of those units, also got uh, laced up by the Dark Riders with Repeater Crossbows and the Shades. So uh, if you see the Shades or Dark Riders, I think you need to fall back and you need to find another way of dealing with them. Um, I'm not sure off the top of my head what would be the best counter to Shades and Dark Riders with Repeater Crossbows other than throwing Meat Shield after Meat Shield at them and just hoping they run out of ammo. But if you have ideas, uh, feel free to let me know. MR Defender, he's he's got the Archaeon on foot and the Exalted Hero. Good choice because it made it harder for Archaeon to get shot up. Archaeon was a perfect uh, choice, perhaps by coincidence, against the Green Knight because Archaeon has access to uh, magic damage, which is something I didn't think about when I picked the Green Knight. So I was able to goon out Malkith, but after Malkith died, I was like, oh crap, now what? There was not really any good targets left for me to go after. Um, I mean, I could have gone after the Chaos Pharaoh Manticore, perhaps, but it was very close to the two Exalted Heroes and Archaeon, so not much value for me there after Malkith was assassinated. Justice, great job using the Bleak Swords. I think he went wide with the Bleak Swords because he wanted something to deal with a lot of zombie pirate deck at Swamp, so good choice. The unit of Blackguard in the back kept me honest with my knights. Uh, the Dark Riders, they got in. Oh, I said they were four. I said they were 500 gold. Actually, Justice went with the variant without the shields, which is an interesting choice. So they were only 450 gold, so correction there. Um, the Harpies, they're a great option against factions like the Vampire Coast because they can just fly over things and cause so much problems. Witch Elves are always great. Um, they, I don't know if they had chevrons to begin with, if Justice chevroned them before the map, uh, b b before the, um, the game, but um, they certainly took a bit of attention away from some other things on the battlefield. So overall, very well played, fun matchup, and uh, hopefully you guys <laughs> learned from some of the mistakes that I, I made in this game. Thanks so much and catch you around.